just because he's God. Come on, give God another hand praise. Just because he's God. What a delight, what a joy it is for us to be in this place of worship. Certainly we give thanks to God for the benefit of his presence. Thank God for the music ministry for blessing us and allowing us to just feel the presence of God. Thank God for Jesus Christ tonight. The words that were coined by Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration Lord, it's good for us to be here. And I must confess that it's good for me to be here tonight. The presence of God and this assembly, Dr. Howard, this prolific preacher and pastor, and distinguished dean. I am grateful for this opportunity to share in this revival service. And I must confess that I'm not here by accident, but I'm here by the providence of God. To my dear friends and brothers, Dr. Dobines and Dr. Walker, Thank you for your prayers. I'm just going to talk a few moments to get comfortable in this August pulpit here so that I might be able to do what the Lord has required. We are so blessed of God to be in this house tonight. For a few moments, the writer records this and you read it during your quiet time. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang songs unto God. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. I want to talk a moment about a miracle at midnight. A miracle at midnight. Some months ago, gentleman by the name of David Williams in Kansas City he was one of the many victims that had succumbed to the COVID-19 virus. His breathing became compromised. He was hospitalized. Things didn't get any better. They put him on the vent later. And it seems as though everything they tried, his body was becoming weak. They ended up putting him on the life support system because things were shutting down. His vital organs were being compromised. The physicians met with the family, his wife, and gave her that unwelcome news that he probably won't last through the weekend. That there's only a 1% chance that he would come out of this comatous state that he's in. The family was devastated, but they were believers in God. 
prepared themselves for what was to come. They made the arrangements to prepare for his homegoing service. They contacted some of his close friends to be Paul Barry's. They got the program prepared and everything in order. The arrangement had been made because they were determined that they were going to unplug him and not allow him to suffer. Day after Thanksgiving, they set the date and they said, after Thanksgiving, we're going in as a family and we're going to stay with him until God takes him home. That at morning they arrived and the physician is there, the nurse is there, the wife is there, and his children are there. And when they walked in the room and all of a sudden he wakes up out of a coma for seven weeks and they began to shout and give God praise and the doctor just dropped his pad and could not believe it and they were astonished at the way in which he come out of a coma and all of his vital organs are at par. They were blown away. But the wife said, I believe in miracles. And he was a living miracles. So much so that on that Friday, when he was really alert, they told him, said, Daddy, we made the arrangement. We, we had the funeral set. He picked up the phone and called the funeral parlor and said, Mr. Funeral Director, I want you to cancel those reservations because I won't be there on Saturday because God has worked a miracle in my life. And I'm here tonight to let you know that we serve a God that still works miracles. We serve a God that can do the impossible when we trust him. Hallelujah. When we trust him, God can still work miracles. What, what's a miracle, Pastor? A miracle is just a divine intervention where all of our human extremities have been dissolved. There's no other way things can work out. There's no other way things are going to open up. But God can step in our human existence and create an opportunity for all of us to be blessed. Do you need a miracle tonight? It's in those moments, it's in those times in our lives when it seems as though that nothing is working in our favor that God gives us opportunity for a moment that can turn into a miracle. The text says that Paul and Silas had been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and because of their integrity based on that gospel, they were seen as violators of the law. They was accustomed. They were, were arrested. They were thrown in prison after they were beaten down. They were cast into the inner cells after they were whipped all night long. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing to me that as a child of God, that we can still find ourselves in difficult situations. Just because we love the Lord, that does not exclude us from life extremities. That does not exclude us from difficulties. But in every difficulty, God promised to be with us. He promised to be by our sides. The Bible said that because of their commitment to Christ, because of the calling on their lives, they were thrown in prison. In essence, they were there in the midst of their own circumstances. Somebody I'm talking to tonight, you got some stuff going on in your life that you cannot figure out. You got some things happening in your world that you don't understand. Well, let me let you in on a secret. Whenever you're pushed in a corner, whenever things come on you suddenly, God is just trying to work a miracle in your life. Miracle. It's just something that you cannot do for yourself. It's, it's something that, that only God can do. It's something that only God would be able to allow himself to get the glory. At midnight, the Bible says. I said midnight, not, not midday, midnight. At 
Mid midnight is not just a tick-tock time. Midnight is a time when things turn the other way. It's the most difficult time in your life. Some of us may go on through some issues tonight. You may have stuff going on in your marriage, in your, in your relationships, with your children, with school. We may have difficulties in our church, but in the midst of all of that, these two believers gives us an answer to death that we cannot do for ourselves yeah. at midnight. midnight. So in that time between night and day, not a tick-tock time, but a chaos time. It's a, it's a God time. When, when things in your life seem like they're the most darkest, that's the time to let God be God. C.S. Lewis said, when he decided that he wasn't God and that God was God, that's when God showed him a miraculous manifestation. It's, it's, it's during this time that God gives us opportunity for a miracle. Anybody need a miracle tonight? In your finances, do you need a miracle? In your relationships, do you need a miracle? When the doctor tells you that cancer has invaded your body, when the doctor tells you nothing they can do, well, I'm going to let you know that it's not over until God says so. It's not over until God steps in. And before I take my seat, I'm going to tell you what they told me in this text about how to get a miracle in your life. It said at midnight, they prayed and sang praises unto God. I know I'm from the old school, but I'm here to let you know that prayer still works. That when we pray, God will answer. When you pray and ask God to see about you, when you pray and ask God to step in your life, prayer can open doors. Not only does it change people, it changes circumstances. He said, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and seek my face, turn and pray, I'll hear from heaven. Prayer works. My grandmama taught me how to pray. Prayer works. When you don't know what else to do, you don't need a theological degree. You don't need to understand all the generics of the Bible. You just need to know how to say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know if thou withdraw yourself from me. Where shall I go? They, they, they prayed. And when they prayed, some happened praise came in the room. Prayer and praise go together. You can't pray to God without praising God. See, some of us, we pray and say in the name of Jesus and get up. But before you get up, you got to give him some praise. Praise for what he's going to do. Praise for how he's going to do it. Praise for the way in which he will do it. It says they prayed and they gave praise unto God. What happened? Bible said that prisoners heard them. Don't you know that they found out they weren't in it by themselves? Whenever we go through difficulties, beloved, we're not the only ones. The word said, think it not strange that you got fiery trials, that death has come knocking at your door. Don't, don't think it's strange, but those of us who are in the household of faith, we got to know that we're not in it by ourselves. So when we come to church and when we gather, somebody ought to hear you praising God because they're in a bad way. And when they hear you praising God, it can lift them to new levels. Said when they prayed and gave God praise, the prisoners heard them. And faith come by what? And hear it by what? The word of God. And while they're praising, or right where you're home, wherever you might be, I dare you to give God a praise. I dare you to lift up your hands. I dare you to say, oh, bless the Lord with me. I dare you to give God the sacrifice of praise. The text says, and suddenly there was an earthquake that shook the foundation 
That's what we need. That's what our nation needs. It's the foundations to be sure. That's what our justice system needs, the foundation to be shook. Our country needs a shaking, the foundation so that injustices and racism and policing, bad policing and policy will be shaken to death. How many of our young boys are locked up right now? Not so much because of what they did, but what they didn't do. They, 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 they locked up because of systems that are in place to keep them. We need the church to start asking God to, to shake the foundations of our country, to shake the foundations. I, I know black lives matter and we march, but we need God to step in and shake the foundations. We're all excited about the guilty verdict for George Ford, but we need more than that. We need God to step in and shake up this country. When they prayed, when they gave God praise, the foundations were shook. They were shaken. And immediately, I said immediately, right, right then, the text says that the doors were open and their bands were loose. I'm done. I know you may be facing something that's uncertain in your life. But God has a way of opening closed doors. God has a way of, of opening doors that the enemy wants to keep you out of. God has a way of opening up doors that will lead you into a greater life, that will lead you into prosperity. When God opens a door, no man can shut. Doors will open. My grandmother had it right. She wasn't in systematic theology talking about the astrological intervention of Christ. She just said, the Lord will make a way somehow. Do I have a witness tonight? The Lord will make a way somehow in your time of need if you call on God, God will answer you. Said, and their bands were loose. Glory, 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 glory. Now, if they praise God with shackles and bands on their feet while they were locked up, now the door is open and the shackles are broken and the bands are loose, you know what kind of praise they gave God after that? Let you know tonight that when God sets us free, when God loosed the shackles on our life, our hands are to go up and our heads are to go back. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. How many of you need a miracle tonight? Yeah. If you need a miracle, I dare you to throw a hand up and say, God, I praise you.
as a lifting of the heart. There's a lifting of the eyes beyond the hill to where our help comes from. Since there's a lifting of the hand, oh, there's a lifting of the heart. revival, this is the perfect opportunity for each one of us to recommit our lives to God. If you need to recommit your life to God, wherever you are right now, you can confess. that you love God and that you allow God to come into your life. If you're looking for a church home, please reach out to us here at Union Branch. We would love to have you here. Now we will have our closing words from our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Gregory L. Howard. Good evening to each and every one of you all, a few who are here and those joining us in this virtual sanctuary. We praise God for being reminded by this preacher, uh, my beloved friend, that in fact, we serve a God who's still in the miracle work in business. We trust that during this season of revival, in light of all of the weight that we've been carrying all year long, dating back to 2020, that if we don't lose hope and faith in knowing that God is still able to perform a miracle, even at midnight. Let's show some love for uh, Dr. James King, or for those of us who love him, our King James, King James. Thank you so much. Uh, this is one of the uh, coolest cats I know, and a great preacher and pastor, and we thank God for Dr. Akeem Walker as well for introducing him, as well as Dr. Aaron Dobines, his beloved brother and friend, my beloved brother and friend who's with us tonight as well. Can we show some love for our praise team, always standing tall and giving God glory through their songs of praise. Deacon John Jones, Minister Veda, for working the sound tonight, and certainly for our pit or the band for doing a marvelous job and making a joyful noise. I'm going to have Dr. King come 
and, and closes out in the manner in which he uh, so desires, but of course for those tuning in apart from this community of Christ, but in particular those of us who are members of this mystical body of Christ, members of this blessed branch of Zion, Union Branch Baptist Church. Some of you all have heard that my beloved good friend, my beloved brother, whom you all know who oftentimes share in this space recently as, uh, as recent as last summer, uh, Dr. Kurt S. Clark, uh, pray for his family uh, in the passing of his identical twin brother on this past Monday. Uh, pray for the Clark family. Uh, pray for uh, Brother Clark, Brother Bert Clark, his brothers uh, who is deceased, his wife, his daughter, his, his son. Uh, and pray for our friend, uh, Pastor Kurt Clark, during these trying times. Amen. Um, but we still believe in miracles at midnight and, and sometimes just the consolation of the Lord, sometimes just a sweet comfort, sometimes just being able to lift that weight and that burden of grief, sometimes not replacing but just filling the void with a friend or precious memories itself is a miracle. Uh, so we praise God for the word of God once again on tonight. Come on, brother. Close us out as you desire. Tune in tomorrow, same place, same time. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Reginald Williams of First Baptist in uh, Chicago will be sharing with us live uh, from here in the sanctuary. If you believe in miracles tonight, we declare that upon your life and your loved ones, that God will work that miracle in your situation. Business, that marriage, that relationship. God, we thank you and we give you praise for the miracles that are coming to this church and to these people. We pray you work a miracle in Dr. Clark's life, that in his dark moment, that you would allow light to just overshadow him. We thank you and we praise you for the miraculous, for divine intervention we love you tonight. In Jesus' name, may the Lord be with us all as we look with expectancy the miracle work and power of God.